How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Wednesday here in this program. we got a lot to talk about here today. Tonight, AW Dynamite. It is the 17th of August, and we have just under three weeks until the AEW All Out pay-per-view. And as of right now, as of this moment, one match is official for AEW All Out. And we don't even know what the match is because it's the finals of the trios tournament. And so as far as like matches with stars, we have no matches announced for a show that's coming up in a little bit less than three weeks. And so... I think it goes without saying that tonight we're going to start building up this card. We're going to get some matches for All Out tonight. And we have got five segments scheduled for the show, including a best of three falls match with Brian Danielson and Daniel Garcia. We'll tell you about the lineup here today and what we know about the show. We also have NXT 2.0 from last night. It was their big heat wave show, and uh, I had predictions, and uh, not all of the predictions came true. In fact, one prediction didn't come true, and I think I know why. We'll tell you about that on the program here today. we got Raw Ratings. we got the G1 wrapping up, coming up later on tonight. The semifinals are over. We'll tell you about the semifinal matches, who is going to the finals. Update on Will Ospreay, who claims that a couple of months ago, he nearly died as a result of a kidney infection. And uh, from what I heard at the time, I don't think he's exaggerating. I can't remember what it was, but his his fever was spiking at something like 106 degrees. It was something crazy. But anyway, we'll tell you about all the news and more. If you want to text us here today, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. At Semper Vivi. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Close. You're listening to Wrestling Observer Live with Brian Alvarez. I do not know where Mike Sempervivi is. I have texted him the big question mark. Where are you, bro? We'll find out if he shows up here today. All right. Well, I got a lot to get into one way or the other. It is Wednesday as noted. And here is the lineup for Dynamite here tonight. We have got Brian Danielson, Daniel Garcia in a best of three falls match. We have the Young Bucks and a mystery partner. Against Andrade El Idolo Rush and Dragon Lee. We have Tony Storm versus Kylin King. We have the Gun Club against the Varsity Blondes. And we have Ricky the Dragon Steamboat appearing as the special guest timekeeper tonight. You think the Dragon would know better than to hang around by that ring bell? But apparently not. So anyway, that's the line for tonight. And as noted, they have got the all-out show in less than three weeks. What's on this show? Well, we know there is the finals of the trios tournament. And uh, presumably the titles are going to be defended. And in a few of those matches, we know who it likely is going to be, what the matches are likely going to be. But we actually don't really know any other matches yet. Presumably, it is John Moxley versus CM Punk. I presume they're going to do a follow-up on the show tonight. They'd have to, basically, because Punk did show up last week, and they had the stare down, and uh, Moxley gave him the shoulder block and and walked out. And uh, one would presume that that's going to be the main event of the pay-per-view. So presumably Punk will be there tonight, Moxley. Whatever they're doing for All Out should become clear here very soon. And uh, probably something setting up Brian Danielson, Chris Jericho. So a lot of things uh, should be happening. It should be very newsworthy over the next several weeks. It has to be, basically, because uh, we got a big show coming up. We also had, of course, NXT 2.0 last night. I'm going to do the full NXT 2.0 review here in a while. But it was newsworthy for a few reasons. Uh, first, no segment with Sangha. Apparently it was... I don't know if it was cut from the show or if it's going to air next week or what, but he promised this week and he wasn't there, so I was very upset about that. But the actual newsworthy things, we had the women's championship match, which I thought for sure, I thought for sure Mandy Rose was going to drop the title. And in fact, Mandy Rose 
pinned Zoe Stark in the middle of the ring. She hit her with her jumping knee. Zoe kicked out. So then Mandy put Zoe's knee brace, her metal knee brace, on her own leg and did a knee brace assisted jumping knee, which seems like it should be illegal, but the referee was all he was all fine with it. And and she pinned Zoe Stark. So the reason I bring this up as potentially newsworthy is I thought that like Mandy Rose was going to lose a title and off she was going to go Ron Smackdown main roster. I don't know for sure, okay? But when they announced uh, Zoe Stark and Nikita Lyons for that women's tag team tournament, my uh, my belief was that it was going to be a one and done and they were going to go back to NXT. After this, I think there's a decent chance that Zoe's being called up. I think it's way too early to call up Nikita Lyons, but Zoe Stark has been wrestling for a decade, and she's ready for the main roster. She's she's as good or better than probably more than half of the current women's roster. So my guess is that uh, that Zoe Stark is probably on her way to the main roster, and uh, maybe Nikita Lyons as well. But hopefully Nikita Lyons is a one and done, and Zoe Stark is up there up there permanently. We also had the uh, the loser leaves town match. Uh, the street fight, and in fact, Santos Escobar was beaten. Tony D'Angelo hit him with the crowbar. Santos was beaten. And so, I mean, I don't think his contract is up, so that would mean he's going up to the main roster. So that is good news, because he deserves to be on the main roster making big money having great matches. And the other noteworthy thing on the show, which could have big ramifications is the NXT UK invasion. Gallus invaded the show. The show went off the air with Tyler Bate showing up to confront Braun Breaker. And they, I believe they've got a show coming up. Uh, this It's on All Out Weekend. It's not been announced yet, but I believe that they're doing a, a big show All Out Weekend. And I don't know if it's going to be like War of the Worlds or, or whatever, but... I'm pretty sure it's going to be an NXT UK versus NXT show. And, you know, they canceled the last several sets of of NXT UK tapings. And among the talent, the rumor was NXT UK is done. And with Gallus and Tyler Bate and I'm sure numerous others showing up in, in NXT, it's not official, but I do have the impression that this could be it for NXT UK. And they're going to merge it together with the NXT here in the U.S., and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like a bunch of unification matches coming up at the uh, at the next big show. But the funny thing about Tyler Bate showing up is uh, he showed up as the NXT UK champion. And he is officially the NXT UK champion. He won the belt in a match. But the match has not aired. They're in the middle of a tournament that is airing on the NXT UK TV show. And they literally spoiled the tournament by having Tyler Bate come out as the champion before the tournament has finished airing on television. So don't yell at me about spoilers. This was them. So anyway, that is the uh, the update. I'll do the full NXT UK review here in a while. But uh, a lot of big things going down, and I think, uh, I think some big changes coming in a lot of different ways. We had Raw. Raw on Monday night, 1.98 million viewers. A point five three in eighteen to forty nine. Show finished first for the night on cable, including beating the final episode of Better Call Saul head to head. Raw beat every television show on cable and network, except The Bachelorette, at eighteen to forty nine, and all but four network shows and one cable show, two in Spanish, in eighteen to thirty four. Now, in total viewers, you know, sometimes we do the, uh, the the demo and then the total viewership. And, of course, when we talk about the uh, demo and Dynamite finishing number one, everybody goes, Yeah, but they didn't break a million! They didn't break a million! How many viewers? Well, if you want me to go by viewers, Raw was not number one. If we go by viewers, Raw was number eight. If you want Raw to be number one on cable and number one across all shows on network and cable, you have to go by the demo. So... Just want to throw that out there. So anyway, they were uh, number one in the demo, but in total viewers, they were number nine behind eight news shows. And the uh, the viewership 
Do you remember how we were talking about the uh, Raw show the other night, and I was talking about how there was, you know, oh, Brian's talking about too much wrestling. No, I was talking about how there was long, boring matches in the third hour. Uh, there, there, there was no reason to even book the matches. Like, there was no storyline reason for AJ and Bobby Lashley for the title. Uh, they literally announced it the day of the show. There was, you know, they shot an angle, but, like, who cares about uh, Austin Theory and Dolph Ziggler? Well, in fact, the third hour did have a big collapse, but the first two hours did very well. And the first two hours of the show were very good. Uh, the first hour, 1.97 million viewers. The second hour, 2.09 million viewers. And the third hour fell to 1.88 million, which is still a very, very good number. But um, what's interesting is, uh, and this happened, it's actually a funny story with WCW. Vince Russo, one of his one of his ideas, because they had a three-hour Nitro, was he was going to axe one of the hours of Nitro. He's going to move it back to two hours because he figured, if I cut the lowest rated hour, then the combined viewership for the two hours will be higher than the combined viewership for the three hours. He was going to do some sort of trick. So he got him to cut that third hour, and you know what happened? Somehow, even though it was only two hours... The combined viewership still ended up being lower than three hours, and they lost out on a full hour of advertising, and that was one of many reasons that ship sunk. But in this particular case with, with WWE, a three-hour Raw did 1.98 million viewers. If that show would have been two hours, it would have been doing 2.05 million viewers. It's a third hour that drags the show down. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, no Mike Sempervivi. I don't know where he's at. Maybe he's watching the G1 right now. Maybe he fell asleep watching the G1. But the G1, the tournament matches have wrapped up. We are down to the finals taking place tonight. In the semifinals, this is not a spoiler, they already happened. It's actually less of a spoiler, in fact, than uh, Tyler Bates showing up with the NXT UK Heavyweight Championship on NXT last night. Okada defeated Tamatanga. And Will Ospreay defeated Tetsuya Naito. So the finals are Okada versus Will Ospreay. And that takes place tonight. And that should be a hell of a match. Will Ospreay says he nearly died from the kidney infection he suffered early this year. Osprey was out of action from May 15 to June 8 as a result of the infection. He is forced to pull out of shows for New Japan, Rev Pro, and Warrior Wrestling. Osprey took to social media on Wednesday, commented on how serious his condition was. So he says it's not really spoken about enough, but May, I nearly died. My infection was that serious. Came back in two weeks. Three months from that point, tomorrow I'm in the G1 final on New Japan's 50th anniversary. I wish I could hear your voices, but I will fight with everything I got. That's a uh, reference to the fact that fans still are not allowed to cheer and boo. They can only clap. And Dave had written at the time, Serious business, and until the infection clears, we won't have an estimate on when he can return to the ring. But what he has is no joke. Osprey said he is as miserable as he has ever been. He cannot stand without feeling he's about to faint and gets bad sweats as well as bad chills. As noted, his temperature was something ridiculous, like 104, 105, 106. And uh, eventually he did manage to return. And if I recall, the first match I saw back, you wouldn't even know he was gone. So uh, very, very impressive. Glad he's all right. And uh, good luck to everybody tonight. Finals of the G1. I'm going to do the NXT report. Should we do it now? Should I get it over with? It's actually just mostly wrestling. Open up with Carmelo Hayes and Giovanni Vinci for the NXT North American title. And the match was very good. Match was very good. Uh, there were a few spots where they looked like they were on different pages. But man, this Giovanni Vinci, as far as a technical wrestler, he is so great. Carmelo Hayes is great. And uh, finally, there at the end... Uh, Vinci went for the power bomb. Actually, first, Trick Williams gets in the ring. He gets inside the ring. And he doesn't, he, you know, they have this stupid rule. He didn't touch Giovanni Vinci, but he gets in the ring. And so Vinci grabs him and he gives him a, a, a press power bomb. And, you know, of course, he's distracted. And if this leads to him trying to do the, uh, 
power bomb on Hayes, but Hayes does the Hurricane Rana, pins him. This is the dumbest rule. I hate this rule. It's so stupid. It kills these matches for me. That aside, the match was very, very good. But I wish they'd get rid of that stupid rule. It's just ridiculous. Then we had uh, Mandy Rose show up at the building. Braun Breaker showed up at the building. And listen, I uh, knew all the results before I watched the show because I'm on the West Coast. So I I could be reading too much into this. But there's a term, boo-boo face, that we hear often. And uh, from the moment the show started, I mean, Mandy, she's just all smiles from the moment the show starts. And uh, Zoe Stark... Not all smiles the entire show. So I'm pretty sure Zoe Stark was supposed to win the title. And my presumption is because she didn't win, she's going to the main roster. I, I can't think of another reason why. But, man, I watched this show, and it was like, I know who's winning this match. I mean, I knew who, but it's just like from the, from the moment I saw both of them, it was, it was clear who was winning the match. We had uh, Gallus attacking Diamond Mine. So Julius Creed's doing a promo. And remember that footage that he saw where he saw something that none of us saw? Well, they show the footage, and uh, the what he saw was, um, uh, what's his face? Uh, Tony D'Angelo. They were doing the match with Tony D'Angelo, and Tony D'Angelo's like, he's tapping the mat, and he's doing these, like he's a, an umpire, doing all these signals. And uh, Julius presumes he's doing these signals to Roderick Strong, and that, and that Roderick Strong and uh, Tony D'Angelo are in cahoots. So he's calling out Roderick. Roderick's pleading innocent, and this whole the whole deal. And then uh, finally, as they're getting angry, they get attacked by Gallus. And actually, all of the fans knew Gallus. They did Gallus chants, and uh, they beat him down. All four of Diamond Mine. And I don't know if they're dropping their Roderick Strong split from Diamond Mine because, you know, they tease that he was going to join Gallus, but Gallus beat him down as well. So, you know, Vince is gone. Triple H is running both companies, basically. I mean, you know, Sean's always been running the company, but Vince and and, uh, Kevin Dunn and everybody were in charge. So maybe they dropped the Roderick Strong thing. I don't know. We'll find out. But uh, it looks like Gallus will be feuding with all of Diamond Mine. Although I guess we need... Either one person to switch or one person to be added to Gallus. It's three on four at this point. So, Cora Jade, Roxanne Perez. This match was pretty good. Uh, it was another one of those matches where every now and then there'd be something where they froze. But in general, I mean, Roxanne Perez looked great. Cora Jade did pretty good. And uh, Roxanne Perez at the end, uh, Jade brings this uh, big stick into the ring. And they end up fighting. The stick falls on the ground, and uh, Perez grabs it. And, of course, if she uses it, she's going to be disqualified. And so she's thinking, she's thinking, and finally she just just can't do it. And so Cora jumps her. The stick falls on the ground. Cora DDTs her onto the stick, pins her. So Cora Jade gets the big win here, which I figured would happen because it's clearly going to be a feud. And based on the finish, they can go to like the street fight or the no DQ or weapons match or whatever. And uh, ultimately, Roxanne Perez is going to get her win in the end. But this was pretty much the way they should have done it. We had uh, Tony D'Angelo Santos Escobar. All or nothing street fight. Good match. It was a very good match. And uh, they used all the gimmicks. They used everything. Uh... Electra Lopez, uh, Electra Lopez at one point took a bump, and uh, finally there at the end, both guys are down in the middle of the ring, and there's a crowbar in the ring, and there's brass knucks in the ring, and the guys look at each other, they look at their respective weapon, and all of a sudden it's a race, and they both race for the weapon, but D'Angelo gets that crowbar first, ba-bam, hits Santos Escobar, pins him, and Santos Escobar must leave NXT. Hopefully for fame and fortune up there on the main roster. Good match. Indy Hartwell is backstage, and she receives a uh, special package, and it is a it is artwork of her and Dexter. So I don't know if she's being called up to the main roster, or I don't think he's getting called back down. But uh, they certainly tease they're going to be back together again at some point. And then Blair Davenport, the former B Priestley, shows up. 
and declares she will be the next NXT Women's Champion. We had Mandy Rose and Zoe Stark, and uh, the match was... It's, it's like all of these matches, all of these matches, largely good, and then there's that spot here or there where what the heck was supposed to happen there? They both just freeze. It's like the story of these matches the last couple of days. But in general, the matches are, are pretty good. And they went back and forth. Zoe Stark looked really good. And as noted, uh, Mandy hits her with a jumping knee, which no one's ever kicked out of. Zoe kicks out. Mandy, who had been working over her leg the entire match, she takes off the knee brace. She puts a knee brace on her own knee. Ba-bam! Pins her. Mandy Rose retains the title. Zoe Stark gets beaten. We had a vignette for Quincy Elliott, Super Diva. I cannot wait for this one. And unfortunately, we did not have the vignette for Sanga. But maybe that'll be next week. We had Braun Breaker, J.D. McDonough in the main event. And uh, what do you mean, who? Did I stutter? Quincy Elliott. He's new. They're doing vignettes to get him over. The Super Diva, Quincy Elliott. So, yeah, the main event was uh, Braun Breaker and J.D. McDonough. And it was, uh, I would say it was good. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. You know, J.D. McDonough is a very good worker, but it was just impossible to believe he's going to beat Braun Breaker. And Braun just beat him up, beat him up, beat him up, beat him up. J.D. got some heat for a while. It's just, you know, tough to believe he had any chance. And then they do the spot at the end where, you know, Braun's beating him, he's beating him. And then J.D. ends up, you know, bleeding from the mouth, and he just smiles. And, dude, they love this stuff where the baby faces are creeped out by people. And I'm like, why is Braun Breaker afraid of blood? J.D. McDonough does the, the blood thing and Braun Breaker's momentarily like, oh, uh, uh, he's bleeding. I'm like, dude, he's bleeding. Beat his ass, bro. And so finally he did beat his ass. And he hit him with a series of moves, press into the power slam, pinned him, retained the title. And then that's when Tyler Bate showed up. And they uh, both had their titles. The title to Tyler Bate is not on television one yet. And they had the stare down. They did the face off. And the show went off the air. So, overall, good show. It was a good, good edition of NXT 2.0. No no goofiness. All the matches were largely good. And, uh, and we got some storylines coming out of it. Guys leaving. Guys invading. Lots of stuff. Hey, we got a lot of time for feedback after the break. Text me, 425-780-7566. Email me, brian at wrestlingobserver.com. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. No Mike Sempervivi, where is this bloke? But we got a lot to get into here today. And it's your chance to drop us a line. If you want to text me with your thoughts on anything, questions, comments, etc. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email. That is Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. You can text me, 425 780 Seven five six six. My Twitter's at Brian Alvarez. Cameo F four W online. Been doing a lot of cameos lately. Now's your chance. Thirty five dollars. That's it. Thirty five dollars for a cameo. A personalized cameo for someone you love or someone you don't. Do a lot of those as well. All right. Let's see what is in the message bin here today. 425-780-7566 is the phone number here. Setting the bar pretty low for Roxanne and Cora. Match was rough. How was that finish not a DQ? Well, uh, because they have these stupid rules is why it was not a DQ. Roxanne got the stick. She never used it. The stick fell on the ground. Mandy did a DDT. She happened to land on the stick. But it wasn't like Mandy physically picked up and used the stick on her. Yeah, it's dumb. It's just as dumb as I can hit the ring. I can hit the ring with a flamethrower. If I'm doing a match with Filthy, I can hit the match with a flamethrower in my hand. Not at EQ. I can point the flamethrower 
at Filthy Tom. Not a DQ. I can put my finger on the trigger and say, I am going to burn you to a crisp. Not a DQ. I burn him to a crisp and then I am DQ'd. This rule is stupid. It's a stupid rule. It should be banished. You and Lance were talking about the next AEW champ. Do you think Punk will go heel to challenge Mox, or will it be vice versa? It feels like Mox has really earned the belt. Punk has never defended, so he feels less legit at this point. Well, I mean, the pay-per-view is in Chicago, so I would be very, very surprised if we did Punk versus Moxley with Punk as a heel going into Chicago. If one of them is going to turn heel for this feud, it's got to be Moxley. And, you know, the question is, would anybody boo Moxley anyway? And actually, when you think about it, I mean, Punk got a massive ovation when he made his return. But, I mean, Mox has been super over as the babyface champion this entire summer. So it would be interesting. If this match wasn't in Chicago, I do wonder who the fans would boo and cheer if they had a champion versus champion unification match. Because it's in Chicago, I don't think there's any chance that CM Punk is being booed. So if you are going to have one of them be a babyface, one of them be a heel, like Moxley's got to be the heel for this feud, if the people will boo him. Of course, if you watch Mox, I mean, half the time he's a heel anyway. People cheer him, so I guess it doesn't really matter one way or the other. Who do you think should win the G1? Osprey or Okada? Well... Glad Mike's not here. I don't want to have an argument about this. It doesn't matter. In the old days, if if Jay White's the champion and you're gonna do one night of the Tokyo Dome and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna figure out Jay White's opponent through the G one, then I would say, well it's gotta be Okada. Okada Jay White for the title at the Tokyo Dome. But it's not one night anymore, it's two nights. So it doesn't matter. I mean, there's a decent chance that uh, Jay White's going to defend the title on both nights. If if Osprey loses, he can still challenge for the title on one of the nights of the Tokyo Dome. So it, to me, it, like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter like it used to. It's just you know either guy can win, and you know there are going to be two different championship defenses. Someone who doesn't win the G1 is still going to get a shot at the champion on one of the nights of the Tokyo Dome. So. You know, I I would I would have Osprey win as somebody different, and you know you can have Osprey and whoever or Okada could beat Jay White on night one, and then you know Okada Osprey night. There's a million things you can do now. There's there's so many things that one individual G1 win matters less than it used to to me. It's my opinion. All right. Obviously tonight is Kenny. But hypothetically, if it were a swerve, who would you want to see as a third man? There ain't going to be a swerve! Unless something horrible happens to Kenny Omega, which hopefully will not. But if I had to pick a partner for the Young Bucks, and it wasn't Kenny Omega, why, of course they would have to choose Brandon Cutler. There's no other option. But don't hold your breath on that one. If Punk and Moxley wrestle for the Undisputed Championship at All Out, can you see MJF making return to screw CM Punk, thus delivering the most embarrassing loss of his career? It would take Punk losing in Chicago twice, but it would keep MJF heel if that's what they want. Well, I think that they clearly want MJF to be the heel. And he, MJF did do that line, I'm going to hand you the most embarrassing loss of your career. But Punk already lost in Chicago. Like, I can't figure out what would be more embarrassing than that. Why would losing an interim versus regular, well, a unification match, why would losing a unification match when the champion is John Moxley, why would that be more embarrassing than losing like twice to MJF in Chicago or whatever it was. Why would that be more embarrassing? So I I don't see... I wouldn't be the least bit surprised 
if MJF returned after whatever they do in Chicago. I would not be the least bit surprised. I mean, he's been gone for months. He was one of their biggest ratings movers. I'm surprised he's not back already. But, you know, the fact that he's not back yet, one would think that he's probably coming back at or around All Out. I think, and I've thought this for a long time, I think that MJF is ultimately going to beat Punk for the title. And so I wouldn't have MJF cost CM Punk the title. MJF is going to want to win the title from CM Punk. So I could see his most embarrassing loss being not only losing to MJF in Chicago, but losing the title to him in Chicago, which, of course, would be way down the road. So I, I, don't, I don't think that I wouldn't have MJF cost him the title. I would, I, if, if, if Punk is going to beat Moxley, I would have Punk and MJF feud over the title. If Moxley is winning, I suppose you could have Punk lose because of MJF. But we've already seen Punk feud with MJF in non-title matches. I think the next step has to be for the title. But I have I have no idea what's going on with MJF. So, how do you see the G1 play out? We already talked about that. Since tonight's AW Dynamite is sponsored by House of the Dragon, wouldn't it be great if they incorporated? Game of Thrones storylines into tonight's show. I could see Kenny Omega coming back to this huge celebration only to conspire with a couple of heels and turn on everyone a la the Red Wedding. You're not going to turn on everybody the first night back when you're going to be doing a trios tournament with your partners being the Young Bucks. He's going to be back as a babyface. The big question is what do we do with Don Callis? What do we do with Don Callis? Because if you remember, they had a really hot heel. His name was Dan Lambert. And everybody hated Dan Lambert. And Dan Lambert was a great heel. But uh, they had that very bizarre period where Dan Lambert and his crew were feuding with Sammy Guevara. And the fans decided they hated Sammy Guevara after he made a comment about Ethan Page's child. And they turned on him. And then they were cheering Dan Lambert's crew against Sammy. And uh, Dan Lambert started cutting babyface promos. And he was actually a hell of a babyface. So my point is, I guess we have two options here. Either Don Callis can return as a babyface. And I think he could do it. Or Don Callis, this despicable, horrible human... Needs to uh, basically turn on Kenny in some way and uh, and go with somebody else to try to take out Kenny. I'm not sure which way they're going to go. Or I guess the other option is Don Callis just doesn't return for a while. So I guess we'll find out which way they go. But uh, I am intrigued by what they end up doing or not doing with, uh, with Don Callis. Because Don Callis and Kenny as a heel act was awesome. It was great. So we'll see what happens when things change here. If NXT UK is done, I guess it explains why BJ and JB have their titles. I wonder if Gallus wins titles from them, and then they challenge Diamond Mine in a unification match. You could do that. You could do that. I think they need to unify all these titles. We don't need NXT UK and NXT titles if the NXT UK guys are all going to be in NXT. So I wouldn't be surprised if they had a big... Because, listen, if they're running an NXT 2.0 pay-per-view over All Out Weekend, okay... Uh, this this NXT 2.0, it cannot continue on as the uh, NXT 2.0 that debuted in October, November. If you're going to run a show over All Out Weekend, it's got to be the old NXT, which means it's not like a bunch of geeks, trainees, the whole nine yards. It's got to be the best workers you have in the best matches. And I think that's going to be, you know, the influx of NXT UK talent you know, I think they're trying to move back in that direction where, yes, your Lash Legends and your uh, whoever, they're going to be there. They're going to gain experience. But the show is going to be built around the best workers that are going to be on their way to the main roster ultimately. I think that's the way they're going to kind of... Because this was not Hunter's idea to do this. In fact, this was... Hunter was booted, and they replaced his vision with their vision. So there's no way Hunter takes over and he's like, I'm going to stick with the vision that they booted me out for. He's going to go back to his vision. And you could kind of see it on the show last night. 
I mean, they're bringing in good workers, and they're going to be mixed in with the current good workers on NXT 2.0. So I think that we need to, if NXT UK is done, I think we need to unify all the belts, get the best men and women working on that show, and and bring it back to something closer to what it used to be as opposed to what it was when Dunn and Vince decided it needed more color. This person here says, since Vince is gone, can they get rid of the stupid names? I I, I wish, but uh, could they call Braun and Steiner? Well, they could do anything, but, you know, Vince Vince had some weirdness about him. Don't get me wrong. But don't think that Nick Khan, Hunter, Stephanie, like don't think that, that those those three don't also have some, I don't want to call them weird ideas. There's a reason for a lot of these name changes. Like they don't want somebody to leave WWE and go capitalize on their WWE fame in AEW. That's why if your name is, is, uh, is and I think Pete Dunne, is Pete Dunne his real name? I'm not even sure what Pete Dunne's real name is, but it doesn't matter because he was Pete Dunne on the Indies. Like they don't want they don't want Pete Dunne. They don't want to call him Pete Dunne, and because he uh, he was Pete Dunne on the Indies, he can go to AEW as Pete Dunne. His real name is Peter England, so they they don't want to call him Pete because he'll be able to use the Pete part in AEW. So there's a reason they. It's not just Vince. It's intellectual property reasons. So no, I don't think that uh, they're going to use the Steiner name. Because they don't want him going to AEW at some point, potentially, and being a Steiner. So I, I would prefer better names, but I'm not sure you're going to get all of them that you want. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Still never heard from Mike. Hopefully he's all right. Check his Twitter, at Sempervivi. We'll update when we uh, hear something. But normally when this happens, he is... Uh, Slept through the show. Imagine sleeping through the show where we talk about NXT 2.0. Can't even believe it. This person here says, I think the Dark Order wins the trios tournament and reunites the elite. Hmm. Interesting. And this person here, I could do a whole show on this one. People joke about this a lot, but what do you honestly think Vince is doing with all of his new free time? Dude, I got no idea because that guy lived and breathed pro wrestling, WWE, 24-7. That's all he did. He woke up in the morning, went to the gym. Actually, I think he went to the gym before he went to bed. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. But he woke up in the morning. He went to work. He worked. He traveled. He worked. He tore up scripts. He rewrote things. He worked. He worked out. Went to bed. Got up and did it again. That's all he did. No hobbies. All WWE. So, dude, I have no idea what this guy is doing. I have no idea what he would be doing every day. I mean, he's looking at his own uh, company. He's he's looking at his, his son-in-law and his daughter. Bringing back all the guys he didn't want. Pushing all the guys he didn't necessarily want pushed. I mean, I don't know. Hopefully he's busying himself with whatever he's got to do for this investigation because at least it'll give the guy something to do. But you know what he's not doing? Tearing up scripts! Thank God. So there is that. We're out of time, everybody. I want to thank you all for listening. WrestlingObserver.com later on tonight. Myself and Dave Meltzer back here tomorrow with more. And we'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs>